Good morning. Good morning. Come and take your seats, please. Wonderful to see you this morning. We'll give you a warm welcome. Warm welcome to everybody online as well. Once again, there's a few away, a few unwell. It's that time of year, bless them. Um, so we pray for health upon you this morning. We're going to worship God. We're going to praise Him. We're going to take communion this morning. We've got a wonderful Laura sharing the word with us this morning. So we're looking forward to that. So if you're able to, let's stand. And let's just spend a moment quieting in our hearts. Ever feel like you're just rushing from one thing to another? Well, this is a moment not to rush away. But this is a moment to say, Lord, we're here for you. We're here for no other reason but for you. And we want to enter into your presence this morning. We give you permission to do what you want to do this morning, Lord. This is your church. We are your people. We open our hearts to you this morning. We worship you, Lord. We love you. We give you praise. We thank you for what's happened this week. The good times and the bad times. The nice times, the tough times. The laughter, the tears. We thank you, Lord. And through it all, you were with us. Lord, we just say we love you, we honour you, and we praise you this morning. And as Psalm 66 suggests, we shout with joy to God all the earth. We sing the glory of his name. We make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing praise to your name. Hallelujah. Let's just start lifting our voices, just singing him praise, just telling him how much we love how much we worship him, just connect with him this morning. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We give you glory this morning. We honor and praise you. Your love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain from beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery. How you gently lift me when I am surrounded. Your love carries me. Hallelujah. 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 Your love makes me sing. Hallelujah. 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 
Come on, let's sing praise to him. Let's lift our voices. Do we believe he's faithful? Do we believe he's always with us? Do we believe he's strong? Then let's sing praise. Let's sing praises to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
we worship you, Lord. Psalm 68, praise be to the Lord our God, our Saviour, who daily bears our burdens. Our God is a God who saves. From the sovereign Lord comes the escape from death. Hallelujah. We worship you this morning. We give you praise, Lord Father God. We thank you for all that you've done, for your faithfulness, for your goodness, for your blessings, Lord. We praise you this morning. Hallelujah. Worship you, Jesus. You are enough for us. Hallelujah. Christ is my There's nothing in this world that could ever satisfy Through every trial, my soul will sing No turning back, I've been set free Christ is 
I just wonder if one or two of you can lead us in praise and thanksgiving prayer to him this morning. Song we could ever see. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of every 
worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart. just spend a moment in your presence now Lord reveal yourself to us once again Lord fan into flame those passions that maybe have have gone a bit Renew those promises, Lord Jesus. Reveal yourself, Lord. Lord, refresh us this morning. Fanning to flame that spirit in our hearts once again, Lord Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Lord. More of you, Jesus. More of you in our hearts, Lord. Take those things in our hearts that's not meant to be there, Lord. Take them away and fill us with you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. 
We worship you, Jesus. Hearts to you, Lord. Open our hearts. Let us let you in, Lord. that over not just people here but people online this morning I need to know that the scars and the struggles he is faithful through it all never once are we going to face them on our own and the truth is sometimes it feels like it but he is faithful and I pray that over those that need to hear that this morning. He is faithful. You are not on your own. He is faithful. Hallelujah. 
worship you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Worship you. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your love. Your blessings are new every morning. How great you are, Lord. Lord, we pray for those who would want to be here this morning but are unwell. Lord, we pray healing upon them now in the name of Jesus. We pray that they would be well. We think of Sharon, Lord. We lift her up to you. We pray that she would be well. That she would feel the touch of you upon her life, Lord, this morning. Knowing you are faithful. We pray, Father God, for those who are still in these wars, Lord, around this world. And once again, we come before you and we pray all that we can pray. And that is for you to be peace upon it, Lord Jesus. We pray for wisdom and kindness and your heart in those leaders, Lord Jesus. For those innocent people, Lord. We pray for protection and your love upon them. We pray for those, Lord Father God, here this morning. We, we may have those scars, we may have those struggles, we may have those things going on in our lives, Lord. Those worries. And we come before you this morning, Lord Jesus. And we lay before you the faithful God. The faithful God. faithful and Lord may we know that we, may we know your strength may we know your faithfulness upon us Lord we pray for this community we pray for your blessing and your anointing upon it Lord we pray that we will not be idle but we will be a shining light in this community Father God that we would input into this community. We would love this community. We'd be a blessing to it, Lord. We think of the Christmas craft fair this Saturday. We don't want to just put it on to have a good time. But we want to advertise you as well, Lord Jesus. We want to show you, Lord, through it all. We want to bless the community. And I pray, Lord, we will do that this on Saturday, Lord Jesus. You'd bless all the hard work. Because you are faithful. How we love you, Jesus. How we praise you this morning, Lord. As we prepare our hearts for communion now, we're going to sing, I'm amazed in your presence hallelujah worship
drops of blood for mine How marvelous, how wonderful And my song shall ever be How marvelous, how wonderful Is my Savior's love sorrows he made them his very own he bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous take your seats but let's just stay in this mode of prayer towards him this morning this mode of worship that song is so wonderful and reminds us of everything you went through Lord Jesus the pain the denial that you experienced the mental hurt the spiritual hurt the physical hurt but as our song says you you sweat your blood so we did not have how marvellous how wonderful you are we come round this table this morning knowing how marvellous, knowing how wonderful he is because of what he did for us. Because he died on that cross. Because he's faithful. Good. And he loves us. We just think about everything I've just said. Everything he went through. And he loves us. Sometimes we don't even love ourselves. But he loves us. His love was so strong. That he sent his son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Because he loved us. He loves us. He wanted to do life with us. But he does tell us in 1 Corinthians 11 
that we need to examine ourselves and examine our hearts before we do this in remembrance of him. And the reality is all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So let's just spend a moment casting our minds back and laying them before him. Lord, would you forgive us for the times we've got it wrong. We thank you, Lord, that you do. We confess our sins, you are faithful and just and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Give us a strength to not go back to it, but to seek you, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for who you are, for what you did. You are faithful. How marvelous, how wonderful you are, Lord Jesus. If joy and peace could help me serve this morning, please. I just want to encourage you these emblems come round you will remember what he went through so that we could know life we could know forgiveness we could have that friendship and relationship with him this morning because of what he did
Psalms 145 tells us that the Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving towards all he has made. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteousness in all his ways and loving towards all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him and he hears their cries and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 God is faithful. God is good. This morning. Amen. Are you sitting comfortably? Good, because this video news is a bit of a whopper this week, okay? It's a bit of a long one. It's all Christmas, more or less, okay? So by the end of this, you will have loads of dates that you will all forget, but you will know everything to do with Christmas. Here we go. Hello, good morning, and welcome to Mosborough Elim Church. I want to give you a warm welcome this morning. If it's your first time or your thousandth time, you are welcome. Please don't forget after the service, we do refreshments, tea, coffee, biscuits. Please do stay and fellowship with us this morning. This is video news and this is everything to do with the life of the church. So this week on Tuesday at 6.30 via Zoom, we have our prayer meeting. Please do join us, but if you can't join us, please do set time aside where you can pray for the church, pray for the community, pray for each other. If you've got any prayer requests, please let myself or Titus know and it would be our honour and privilege to pray for you. So that's prayer meeting Tuesday at 6.30. Also, next Sunday, Sunday for 26th of November, very excited because we've got our live worship back. We are going to be led in worship by the Mosborough Ealing Church Worship Band. And really looking forward to that. Can I encourage you to make sure you're here to be part of it as we are just led by the Mosborough Ealing Church's Worship Band in live worship. So that's next Sunday, Sunday the 26th of November. Okay, are you ready for this? Are you prepared? Because Christmas is coming in fact christmas is really close are you ready for this 36 days to go only 36 days to go christmas is almost here let alone coming and this is what as a church we are going to be doing this christmas so firstly, this Saturday, Saturday the 25th of November, we have our Christmas Craft Fair. Thank you to everybody who has signed up or said they're going to be coming along and helping. Really appreciate that. If you still want to sign up, please go to the back and sign up. We need cakes. We haven't got enough cakes. Can you please go and sign up for some cakes, please, that you will bring a cake or get us a cake. That would be fantastic. So please do sign up for cakes and pray for this event. But not only that, come along. Come along to this event. Let's mix with the community. Let's be part of it. Let's come along, invite your friends, invite your family, invite your neighbours, let them know about it. It's going to be a great time. So Saturday, the 25th of November, the Christmas Craft Fair. So Sunday, Sunday the 3rd of December will be a family service, but also it will be the deadline for the toy appeal. So all toys need to be back, not wrapped, but in a bag with the gift tag by Sunday the 3rd of December. It needs to be back by that day. We still have three tags. They are not tags, they are three children. 
that still needs a gift. So please, if you can take one and you haven't already, but you need to take one, please take it. Or if you took one and you can take a second, please do. You will find them at the back of the church on the table. Three tags to go. Please do take it. Sunday the 3rd of December, that's when your gifts need to be back. Not wrapped in the bag with the gift tag. Sunday the 3rd of December. Thank you. And then Sunday the 10th of December, we will have a normal morning service, but then in the evening at 6.30, we will have our carols by candlelight. Always a great time. Really great just to come along, be able to invite people along. And there'll be a sort of short talk, but it will be mostly singing carols and hearing the story, hearing the Christmas story. So please, Sunday, the 10th of December, Carols by Candlelight, come along, invite people along. It's going to be a great evening. Then Saturday, the 16th of December, we will have our Christmas Winter Wonderland party. Really looking forward to that. The team's working really hard on that. So please, if you haven't signed up for that, please do sign up for it and uh, let the team know you're coming along so we can make sure everybody is catered for. It's going to be a great time. And then Sunday for 24th of December, Christmas Eve, we will still be having a morning service. Um, it will be a bit shorter, it'll be a family service and a bit shorter. And we will be having a great time together as we continue to worship, celebrate and prepare ourselves for Christmas Day. So please do join us Sunday for 24th of December. And then, of course, Monday the 25th of December, Christmas Day, we will have a Christmas Day service from 10 a.m. just for 45 minutes. Please do join us that day as we come together and we celebrate the reason for the season. We celebrate that God sent his only son to be with us. So that's Monday the 25th of December, 10 a.m. And then 31st of December, Sunday the 31st of December, there will be no morning service. So no morning service on Sunday the 31st of December, but there will be a crossover service in the evening, a crossover service in the evening from 10.30. If you want to know more about what the crossover service is, please go and speak to Titus who leads this. So Sunday the 31st of December, no morning service, but the crossover service in the evening. And then on 7th of January, Sunday the 7th of January, we will be back to normal. We will be back to doing what we do. I know that's a lot to take. This video news will be available on the website for you to be able to look at and just remind yourselves of some of those dates going to be a great Christmas. And then finally, we've got our website. It has all the information, all the details, and everything you need to know about the life of the church. So let's keep expanding, equipping, and evolving. God bless. <laughs> Amen. I told you it was a whopper. Who has almost immediately forgotten every day to go in there? Yeah, well, that, that, that's not bad. Why is going, yeah, me? I will other information out to you through the church whatsapp which will be a bit easier for you to follow as well but it's going to be a great christmas please do um, get involved and take part for uh, cakes yes if you, is there still the toy pill things at the back three toy pill things at the back and need to go as well please okay so we're going to go to our sunday schools now it's only the uh, younger group this week but once again, you're in this room this morning. So the younger group is about to go. Older group, your leader is actually preaching. So if you start to come up, and I'm going to pray for Laura this morning. So let's pray. Lord, we pray your blessing and your anointing upon the Sunday school. We pray, Lord, as they continue to build on those firm foundations, you will have your hands upon their lives, Lord. But Lord, for us now, as we just hear your word, would you speak through Laura? 
May we hear your words, Lord Jesus. May you bless us and encourage us, equip us, involve us, Lord. Stretch us, Lord, this morning we pray. Give us hearts to hear and hearts to change, Lord, we pray. In your precious name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. As you almost have guessed, uh, each time I'm asked to come and, you know, share the word, uh, exalt us, like I'm sure most people will do, they pray before then, and uh, as the time gets closer, your heart, you know, <laughs> gets, you know, <laughs> a palpitation. And uh, the reason why that is for me is because I don't see standing here as a small thing at all. I don't see it, I see it as a very big responsibility. You leave your homes. You are not leaving your homes to come and hear man. If it was to hear a person talk to you, you would rather stay in your house. Or you just watch online, or you just do anything. You, you are not here because you want to hear man talk to you, or Laura talk to you. You are here because you are honoring God. You want to hear God talk to you. So my prayer is that today, we will all hear God talk to us. I too will hear God talk to me. Because I have been praying, I've been pondering, God, what would I say? What do you want me to say? And what the Lord laid in my heart is, he said I should say to you what he has been saying to me. And that is that I should, you know, go back to, you know, who I am. For some time, really, I have been, you know, a lot of things have been happening that have made me, not that I forget, but it has kind of blurred my vision or my understanding or what I believed I, the Lord says I am. Lately, this has just been like that. And I don't know, for a lot of people here, uh, you may be in that position. You know who you are. You know what God says about you. But challenges and circumstances of life and happenings have kind of, you know, blurred that vision or kind of made it fade that sometimes you wonder who you are. And there are some people here who don't even know who they are. They don't have a relationship with God. They don't know who they are, but they come to church. Either way, whatever divide you are, whether you are the ones that know who you are, you're forgotten or you are it's kind of blurred or you don't know at all my prayer is just like paul said in uh, uh that's ephesians 1 18 that we may know that we may know what it is god has called us to that we may have that understanding that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened that we may know because there is benefit in knowing. If you don't know, you will walk around even as a prince without knowing what, you know, your ben what God, are, what are yours in Christ. So my prayer is at the end of this service, we will all know what is ours in Christ. Praise the Lord. You see, uh, we are tempted each time to think, you know, to base our identity on, you know, what we do for God. We are tempted to base our identity of who we are in Christ on what we do for God. For example, you think you are who you are because you come to church. Some of us think, you know, we are who we are. Our identity is based on the fact that we teach Sunday school, like I do. Or that, you know, you read the Bible. Or that sometimes, because you stand here in the pulpit to preach, we are so blessed that we have a pastor that knows God and loves God. I have been in a congregation where whoever sits, stands at the pulpit here every time sees it as nothing but a career. He is earning, and he, that so him is a career. But that is not our portion in this church. We are very blessed. Now, like I said, that's you come here does not make you 
is not who you are, does not define you. What defines you is what God says about you. In reality, it is not what you do that really matters. In as much as it counts, it's very important for you to come to church, it's good for you to read the Bible, it's good for you to get involved in the church. But the reality is that it is not what you do. It is what God has done for you. What Jesus Christ has done for you and I. That is what the reality is. And that is what you should base your identity on. Not on what you do for the Lord, but what the Lord has done for you. And what the infallible word of God says, you are. A lot of us may not know who we are because we have not come, we have not known the Lord as Savior. We have not come to know him as a personal friend. So we don't even know what he has done for us. We know he died. He died for the world, some people would say. There is no personal relationship. So the question I'm asking us, and the question the Lord is asking us this morning, what is your identity in Christ? What is your identity in Christ? Some of us base our identity on our jobs, you know, on our job titles. If I ask you what you are now, you could say, oh, I'm an accountant. I'm a chartered accountant. For example, I'm going to call somebody. I'm not picking on you. Uh, uh, who am I going to call now? Can, can somebody just come and meet, uh, for example, it's okay. Oh, Laura, can we get to meet you? Can you somebody come out and introduce themselves? Somebody is going to have to come out. Uh, okay. Okay, Leon. Leon, can we get to meet you? <laughs> Leon, can we get to meet you? <laughs> okay, you see. Okay, maybe I should have asked, said that first before I began. Maybe you'd have come out to say. You see, that is it. Some of us base our, 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 our identity on our, you know, our, job, our jobs. I ask you, so I'm an accountant. Oh, I'm major this, retired. Or I'm, um, you know, uh, whatever. I'm Laura, I'm a nurse. And, you know, those things are good. But that is not who you are. Those things are good, but that's not who you are. The question now is, who are you? If you don't base your relationship or your identity on your job description or on the job that you do, some of us base our, you know, who we are on relationship status. Some people say, oh, I'm a dad. I'm a mom of five children. I'm this or that. Or some of them, some, some people could come and say, well, I am an athlete. I, you know, I'm empathetic, I'm caring, I'm, you know, it depends on what job, what job you are vying for. For us in the uh, 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 healthcare, when you're going for a job, you know what they want to hear, you will give it to them, you just prepare yourself and tell them what they want to hear. You don't forget to tell, mention that you are empathetic, they want to hear that. You never forget to tell them that you are caring, they want to hear that. But those are just for now. Those things can change. Tomorrow I may leave the healthcare and I'm going into the army. The army will not want to hear that you are empathetic or you are caring. Yes, but that's not what they want to hear. Those things change. That is what happens because that is not you. The real you, when you come to know the Lord, when God becomes part of your life, your identity does not change. And what does God say about you? God says you are his own. That you are precious. That you are forgiven. That you are chosen. Every other thing is, can change. But those things, they are cast in stone, as they say. It is God's word that is infallible. That's what God says you are. If you don't know, it is about time you begin to know. And if you know, and, you know, life is making it as if, you know, you never knew that. It is time for us to revisit who we are. Paul, the apostle, said something. Paul, for your information, as I know, I want to believe we all know, 
had a very, very beautiful CV. The Bible says he had something to be boast, boastful about. And I'm going to read what the Bible says, or what he says about himself. Praise the Lord. If we open to, uh, uh, I, I'm not so sure where that one is now, but I, I kind of printed it out here, where he says he has no confidence in the flesh. Praise the Lord. I think it's maybe Philippians 1, 4, thereabouts. Let's look for it. We are Bible. Let's look for it. Philippians 1. Let's see where that is. Anybody that finds it, please. Somewhere about where G, uh, Paul was saying he has no confidence in the flesh. Anybody find it? I'm going to read from here. It says 3-3. Three, three. No, I would like you to read from 4, the bottom part of 4, that says if anyone else thinks they have reasons to boast or to be confident. Can you read? If anyone else thinks he has reasons to boast confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrew, in regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for seal, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That it was the CV of Apostle Paul. In everything, it was impeccable. And he was proud. And he was proud to say it. He wasn't saying it in secret. As he said it, there were people that would have countered and said, that is not true. But nobody was able to counter his CV. It was good. It was impeccable. But those are not who he is. The Bible says that after some time, this, all this legalistic and everything he was proud of, they became nothing for the excellency of knowing Christ. And that is what we are talking about today. What is your identity in Christ? What, who do you think you are in Christ? And what is God saying about you? This was Paul. I'm going to tell us, because of time, I'm going to tell us... Uh, a, a, a story about a man, a young man I know. His name is John. He does some work occasionally for my husband. He's about your age, you young men here. And he, he doesn't know who his father is. He, has never, he doesn't know. He was conceived in a detention camp, or what do they call asylum camp, somewhere in Europe, and somehow he found himself in the UK with his mother, and no mentor, nobody. Life has been very hard for John. And the thing about John is that along the line, he came to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But before then, he has been involved in some stuff because there was no mentor, no father, nobody. He has gotten himself entangled in stuff that were not right. So he, he has a problem with the, with the law of this land as we speak because of this, uh, the sin or the crime he committed before. So the thing is that they want to deport him. They want to send him out of the country, but they don't know where to send him to because he's a citizen of nowhere. He's not British. He was born somewhere. So they don't know where to, to send him to. So he's still here. So they, that is something on his shoulder. But along the line, he has come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And this guy knows who he is. He doesn't allow the circumstance of life or how he came to this life to be a problem for him. 
when you happen to call John on the phone, you, are, you have no doubt as to who you are talking to. He knows who he is. He will tell you this is John, a child of God. He will tell you who he is, saved, forgiven. He will tell you all, whether you like to hear it or not. You are on the other side, and you are the one that either has called him or he has called you. You will hear it. That is a man that has not allowed the circumstance of life to deprive him or rob him of his identity. He knows who he is in Christ. And that was what we are talking about today. The question is, do we really know who we are in Christ? Do I really know? Do I allow circumstance and, you know, situation to, you know, becloud my vision or becloud what I know in my heart, in my heart that I am in Christ? And what are those things that the Lord is telling us today? Who does the Lord say you are? That is the most important thing. What the Lord says about you is exactly who you are. And this morning I have, you know, been looking at it. Who am I in Christ? What is my identity in Christ? Is my identity based on my work, on my career, on my relationship? Those things can change. Today I'm a nurse. Tomorrow I may be somebody somewhere else. After all, you were not always a mom. Neither were you always a husband. Who are you? What is your identity in Christ? And how do you define yourself? Do not let circumstance in life or of life deprive you. Because if it, we allow it to happen, what happens is that you that is supposed to walk in confidence, you that is supposed to walk knowing that you are a child of the king, you now begin to walk with your head bowed. You cannot, you know, when you lose your confidence, you have lost everything. The Bible says, do not lose your confidence because it has a great recompense of reward. And when you know who you are and you walk in that, you know, in that knowing, things will begin to shift. Things will begin to shift. Praise the Lord. Now, before we go on, I'm going to read to Ross what the Bible says you and I are in the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'd like us to open in our Bibles to Galatians 2.20. If you have your Bible, open to Galatians 2.20. We are going to be very fast with this. And somebody else will just uh, prepare John 1.12. John 1.12. John 1 12. Why some other person could uh, help uh, get Philippians 3 20 ready for us? Yes. Galatians 1 20. Anybody there? Praise the Lord. The Son of God loves you and gave himself for you. Who are you? You are that person that is worth dying for. That is who you are. You are that person that is so precious to God that you are worth dying for. The Bible says the Son of God gave himself for you. I tell you, if you are the last person on this earth that has not known Jesus Christ, that does not know God as, as loving, or as kind, God will still have sent Jesus Christ his son just for you. That's how precious you are. That is how precious you are. The Bible says God gave his only son for you. That is who you are. Don't forget that. That is your identity. Praise the Lord. Anybody ready with John 1.12? I'll read. It says, but to all who believe in him and accept him, he gave the right to become children of God. That is who you are. You are a child of God. You are precious because you believe. And if you have not believed, today is an opportunity. You can meet the pastor or any minister in the house. They will lead you to the Lord. That is who the Bible says you are. And you can 
rest on that assurance. Praise the Lord. Anybody with Philippians 3.20? Mm. Praise the Lord. You are what? A citizen of heaven. That is who you are. I don't want to forget that. We are going to come to, you know, it just reminds me. When the Bible says you, or when we understand, have the understanding, we are a citizen of a place. This earth is too small compared to heaven. What is that telling you? You are an ambassador. Here on earth, that is your citizenship, your home, where you're coming from, your root is in heaven. Here, you are an ambassador, an ambassador, a citizen of heaven. That is who you are. Praise the Lord. Now, let's go on to Isaiah. Isaiah 40, 43 verse 4 says, Since you are precious, and honored in my sight. And because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you. Nations in exchange for your life. That is how precious you are. You are just not anybody. Sometimes we forget who we are. That is why, you know, we say we are marginalized. Christians are marginalized. If we walk in the authority of who we are in Christ, we don't need to, you know, they will see us, they will hear us. Again, they will be afraid of us. What I mean they, people that don't know God, people that don't fear God, and there are a lot of people that don't know God, that don't fear God in our society today. But we won't be in that corner being said, oh, we are being marginalized. It's because we've not made ourselves know. First of all, we don't even know who we are. We'll walk in the authority of that identity of what God says we are. Praise the Lord. Finally, I'd like us to look at, you know, 2 Corinthians chapter, 20, chapter 2, verse 20. 2 Corinthians 2, 20. Anybody find it? Petri? Oh, second. Sorry, Second Corinthians two twenty. Oh, not two twenty. Oh, where am I reading from? Look at First Corinthians then. First Corinthians. No. It says here, say there is, we are therefore ambassadors of Christ. Yeah. Let us check. Yeah. Yeah, based on Philippians 2, uh, 3, 20, that says we are citizens of heaven. So I want us to begin to see ourselves as ambassadors of Christ. Uh, there's a, I, I don't know if anybody can find it. I'm at loss now talking about Therefore, we are therefore now ambassadors. Yeah. It is to uh, 2 Corinthians 520. 5.20. Thank you. Can somebody read it to us? Now that we are ambassadors for Christ, let mm. us as though God has been through us, we will use Christ for our Be reconciled to God. Praise the Lord. This is quite a heavy responsibility. Let us assume, it's just an assumption, that we all here now have known the Lord as our Lord and as our personal Savior. God is now appealing to you as a child of His. He has told you that you are forgot, uh, forgiven. He has told you that you are chosen. He has told you that you are precious. That He, could, he will give nations for you. Hasn't He done it? He did it when he sent his own son. Jesus Christ has paid the price. Now, what is it for us to do as children of God? God has given unto us a ministry. 
And that ministry is a ministry of what? Reconciliation. God has given us a responsibility. You have a responsibility that surpasses coming to church. That is bigger than just reading the Bible. That is bigger than just teaching in Sunday school. What is that uh, uh, responsibility? It is God has given you a ministry, a responsibility to reconcile men back to him. How do you do it? It is not just by words of mouth. Words of mouth is part of it. It is by the life we live in, our, in the society, in our homes, in our schools, in our place of work. God has honored you and called you an ambassador. In a diplomatic call, the highest position is the diplomat, is the ambassador. And that is what God has called us into. And that is the responsibility God has given to you and I. First of all, know who you are in Christ. Know your identity in Christ. If you know your identity in Christ, and know that you are an ambassador. You'll be careful what you do. You'll be careful what you say. You'll be careful the life you live in and outside of the church. God has given you and I a heavy responsibility. First of all, he has made it all easy for us. He's paid the price. He's died on the cross. He's told you you are forgiven. You are loved. You are precious. You are chosen. A whole lot. Now he's asking every one of us to take up that responsibility, to become what? To realize who we are. We are ambassadors for Christ. And what is the responsibility that God is giving to us? He's giving to us a ministry, a responsibility to reconcile men back to him. It's not by power, it's not by might. It is by his spirit. He will help you. He will help you. Only don't forget who you are. When you have that picture, when you have it before your eyes at all times, this is who I am. This is my identity. Every other thing by his grace will fall into place. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for your word that you've spoken to us today. Lord, you have said to us that, Lord, our identity is not based on what we do in the house of God. It's not based on our jobs or our, our relationship status. It is based on your finished work, what you have done on the cross for us. Father, we say thank you. Help us, God, never to forget who we are in you. And also, Lord, you've spoken to us again this morning that you have given us a ministry. And that ministry is a ministry of reconciliation. And you've called us ambassadors, citizens of heaven. Help us, O oh God, in everything that we do, never to forget, never to forget who we are in you. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. That was great. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and let's worship him as we sing, You Never Let Go.
worship you lord we praise you father god and that's not just for this moment but lord may we continue to do that this week ahead lord lord whatever we face may we remember that our identity is in you lord whatever we face whatever happens we know we are a child of god we're heaven bound and Lord, Father God, may our hearts rejoice and praise you this morning and this week ahead, Lord, we pray. For your glory, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us this week. Can I just remind you, if you can sign up for bringing a cake for Saturday, please do sign up. There is a couple of toy appeal labels left as well. Please stay for tea refreshments. Have a great week. God bless you.